we suck. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for 12 Years a Slave, which is a new film directed by Steve McQueen, not that Steve McQueen, the one that directed Shame with Michael Fassbender and Hunger with Michael Fassbender. And this film stars uh, Chueto Ejiofor, I think I said his name right, and Michael Fassbender. So if you do not know the plot of this film, I'll talk about it in a second, but it's a... Uh, yeah, you, you can uh, you can assume this movie's gonna get a lot of Oscar buzz. It's it's the the story itself is just ripe for Oscar, you know, awards. So what did I think of Twelve Years a Slave? Let's talk about the story. Now the story for Twelve Years a Slave, you can you, you can assume this is gonna be the feel good movie of the year. It follows well actually it's set in the eighteen hundreds. I think it's it, I think it's set in the eighteen forties. I can't remember, but I, I, you know, I know it's the 1800s. And it follows a man named Solomon Northrup, who is a black man who is free. This is, you know, the, the time of slaves. And he is a free man. He, he was born a free man. He's not a slave. And he has a family. He has two kids. And he, has a, he has a wife. He lives a nice life. He, he plays the violin. He's really good, very talented. And then he meets with these two white men who say, hey, come with us and uh, we'll make sure you make a lot of money uh, playing at a bunch of clubs and stuff. Come with us and we'll do good with you, man. Hey, come on. Let's get, let's go. And he's like, okay. And he does. And of course, he gets captured and he gets thrown into slavery. Even though he's a free man, he gets thrown into slavery. And it's pretty much his life, the 12 years of him being a slave and what he had to endure and what he had to see, all the hardships and all the sadness that came with that. And of course, that I mean, there was a bunch of really bad slave owners, especially Michael Fassbender, who used to be my favorite actor. Not anymore, you racist son of a bitch. So anyway, there you go. There's the story. That, that's that's about it, as good as it's going to get. Now, to say this is a very emotional movie is putting it very lightly, because not only is it a brutal, super effective movie, but it just leaves you depressed at the end. Just It's such a gut-wrenching movie. If you leave this theater and you don't feel depressed, there's something wrong with you. It's just so effective. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, there's so many scenes in this film where you see, of course, um, Solomon Northrup. He's not even doing anything. He's just looking at the, the camera. There's a moment at the end where he's just looking at the camera, and it's like a two-minute shot. And it almost made me cry because it's just so, so well done, so effective. Just... The way this movie looks, it's all muted colors. It's just so depressing looking. And there's just so many scenes that just make you go, oh my god. This whole scene where someone's getting whipped and it's a character you really like. And it's one of the most brutal, and I, I mean this in brutal as in like, you know, brutal. Like, like, oh that hurts. Like, it just looks like it hurts. It's one of the most brutal whippings I've ever seen in a movie. It's just such a messed up... It just, oh my god, it's so, it's such a great movie, but it's so screwed up. The acting in this film is probably some of the best I've seen this year, and probably some of the best I've ever seen. And I do know I say that a lot about movies this year, where, oh, it's some of the best acting I've seen this year. But really, I am serious about this. Every single actor in this film does an amazing job. Chueto Ejiofor, I never thought he would be in a movie like this. I have not seen him in years. The last movie I saw him in, I think, was Salt, and he wasn't that great in that. I, I never thought he would be an actor that just is amazing, but he is so good in this film. Like I said, there's scenes where he's just staring at the camera thinking about what's going to happen next, and you know what he's thinking about. He's just staring. It actually reminded me a lot of All is Lost, which is a movie with Robert Redford I reviewed last week, where it's a lot of no dialogue, but it's a, a, just a character looking, and you can tell what they're thinking about because the acting is so good. Here it's the same thing, especially with his character, but when he does speak, there's a lot of times where it's so powerful, and you just you, you really do feel bad about this guy being a slave. I mean, he was a free man. He has a wife, kids, and he's just, a, he's, he's trapped in this, pretty much this hell, this hell that uh, um, white people have, have created. Thanks, white people. I suck too. But he's amazing in this. Uh, friggin' Benedict Cumberbatch is great in this. Uh, Brad Pitt, Paul Giamatti, Paul Dano, uh, Sarah Paulson. All these people are either kind of likable, but they're still slave owners, or they're still kind of racist in their own way, or they're just completely hateable. But they all do an amazing job with the fantastic script. But the best actor here, besides Chueto Edgio 4, is Michael Fassbender, who I've never seen in a movie like this before. He's always usually like, maybe 
maybe the cocky asshole, but he's really likable, or he's just a likable guy. Here, he is a, just a sniveling piece of shit in this film. You hate him. You really do. He is such a prick, insane asshole. You hate him, but he's so good in this film. Michael Fassbender should get nominated, along with Chueto Edgia for, but everybody else does an amazing job as well. Do not get me wrong. Benedict Cumberbatch, Brad Pitt, everybody does a great job, and some of them you actually might like a little bit as characters, but for the most part, you're going to hate every white person in this film. Also, I can't remember the actress's name, but she's an, a black actress. I can't remember her name, but she plays uh, uh, Michael Fassbender's favorite uh, slave, pretty much, and she's excellent in this film. You really feel bad for her character, too. So there's a lot of great acting here. There's a lot of amazing camera work in this. Cinematography is I wouldn't say beautiful, but it's really, da it's damn good. The score itself is very haunting, very well done. And I think it's Hans Zimmer that did it, who, of course, we, we've seen him do stuff like Batman and stuff. And this is definitely different from something like that. He does an amazing job. Everything in this movie is amazing. The direction, the writing, the acting, the cinematography, just everything. I can't think of one thing that's either just great or good or average. I can't think of anything that's even great. Everything is amazing in this film. I, I, it's, uh, there's so many good films this year. Rush, uh, freaking, uh, well, there's a lot of great films. I'm not going to name every single one of them. But there were so many good movies this year. But I, 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 this might be my favorite one. It might. It's just such a good movie. And I'll be rooting for it at the Oscars. I give it a 40 out of 40. It's a movie you have to go see. I can't even speak about it. I mean, I, I can't even talk about it too much. You're going to leave the theater. You might even hate the film. But it is such an astonishing piece of work. And I cannot wait to see a new Steve McQueen film after this. This is just tragic and so good. Go check it out. 12 Years a Slave might be in your theaters now. It's out, I think, in wide release. So check and see your showtimes. So there you go. Uh, feel good movie of the year. That's my review. Thank you and goodbye.